Hey toy fans, Aaron here. Today, taking a look at Luke Skywalker in the Snowspeeder outfit as part of the Retro Collection line, which you will find released in the Hoth Ice Planet Adventure game. So not looking at the game itself, but rather just focusing on this carded release. And here is a look at that card where you do get the Star Wars Empire Strikes Back logo. For the background, it is indeed a beautiful image of Luke Skywalker with his Snowspeeder outfit. You got Hoth in the background, a Snowspeeder flying around. Obviously a photoshopped image. As far as retro collection goes, I don't feel like that fits the theme. Everything else has a still image of the character in that particular costume from the movie. As you can see with a couple of the other carded figures next to this. You do still get the white worn edges around the edge of the card, your retro collection sticker, and of course through the blister you see your included figure and accessories. On the back side, things are mostly the same as what we have for the rest of the retro collection. Top portion here is giving your description that this is inspired by the 1980s Star Wars figures. In the red, this is where you got something a little new, and that is going to be the extra call out for the Luke Skywalker Snowspeeder release, which is not listed on the other individually carded figures. Bottom half of the card is your legal information. And now taking a look at this out of the packaging, keep in mind, since this is part of the retro collection, the idea of the figure is that it fits in with that retro wave, the original vintage line of figures. And same as the Escape from Death Star game, where we got a brand new retro collection figure being Grand Moff Tarkin. Now we're getting a Luke Skywalker in a Snowspeeder outfit that was not released as part of the original vintage line. And since the idea is for it to carry that look, that's how I'm going to judge this figure. So not based on, you know, the beautiful sculpts and weathering and articulation that we're getting with today's figures. For the figure as a whole, it's certainly great that we're getting a Luke Skywalker in his Snowspeeder gear that gets you the puffier outfit. This time around they gave the figure some gloves. What I'm not liking, where I feel like this figure misses the mark, is it doesn't feel like a retro figure and instead it feels like a figure that was released only a few years ago for say the Rebels line where the figures just weren't getting a very well defined sculpt. And I know that might be a little confusing since I've said on some of the other retro figures how the sculpting isn't as defined because they're castings of original figures. What I'm talking about this time, as you look at the head sculpting of this figure, things tend to have a little bit more of a rounded appearance to it as something that's being necessarily intentional. As you see the original X-Wing Luke figure, the little round parts on the side of the helmet just had a very, I guess, a hard edge to it. Everything on this helmet seems a little bit more of a rounded edge. Even as you look at where the head is inset to the helmet, kind of just rounds off on the edges. Whereas that original vintage Luke was just a very hard defined edge that his head was in this space. And the helmet, while not a separate piece, felt a little bit more separated from the human head. That aside, the white coloring looks great. The red painting on the top of the helmet looks good for the stripe down the center and the Rebel Alliance symbols off to the side. Gotta say, I'm not a fan of the yellow visor being the solid color that it is. I think that helps add to me feeling like it's a figure that was only done a few years ago, maybe even less. You know, they skipped it on the original vintage Luke and truthfully, I kind of wish they would have just skipped it here. Better if it was translucent plastic, but I think that would give it a more modern feel and that would have been the wrong way to go. That flesh tone painting for the face that is showing looks pretty decent, but here also the sculpting just feels like a quasi-shaped human face, giving you a bit of a nose and a mouth. It doesn't share the same resemblance that we've had on the other Retro Collection figures. For the chest and the arms, the ridges running down the sides of his arms looks really good. Some nice subtle folds and wrinkles being sculpted within the plastic to give it the feel of fabric, or the look I should say. His off-white gloves are looking pretty decent also, and the hands are very much looking like they did with the retro line. You have the traditional cupped appearance for the hands, his right one being sculpted to hold the lightsaber, and then left one holds the harpoon blaster that he comes with. Within the chest, mostly okay here, but same thing. The attention to the detail is not where it was for the original Luke. I feel like they just got a little bit lazy within the chest. Certainly have some of those ridges being sculpted in for the white part of his vest, but certainly nothing like it looked for the vintage figure. And then that black chest box with the white buttons, and you got a single blue one painted in. The painting is looking pretty okay, but that definition of it being an intentional sculpted box sticking off the chest just isn't there. It is raised a little bit, but as you can see compared to that vintage Luke X-Wing, the sculpting that we had on there, like I said, it just felt intentional. That aside, the painting for the black hoses running down from the bottom of the chest box and his black belt around his waist is looking pretty good. And yes, you know, even though it is all just a solid black spot on the inner part of that hose, it's the same as they did for Vintage Luke. So they're kind of staying with what they've done in the past. 
As for the legs of the figure, I think overall things are looking pretty decent here. You have some subtle wrinkles and folds sculpted within the legs to show off some of that fabric. Certainly has the puffy appearance, maintaining the look of the entire figure. White painting for those straps coming down from his flight suit are looking pretty good. A little bleeding off the edge here and there, but you know, that's something that very well might vary from figure to figure. And then sculpting for the boots are looking good also. Rounded capsules on the top of his left foot. Screen right as you look at it look pretty decent and fairly defined. And same for the straps running around the upper part of his boot on each foot. Unfortunately, on the left foot of my figure, screen right again as you look at it, that gray is not covering the orange uh, plastic underneath all that well. A little rubbed off already. As for articulation, head rotates. Both arms rotate at the shoulder. Your legs come straight out and even go back a little bit. As for the accessories, you've got two of them. Blue lightsaber and what I'm pretty certain is the harpoon gun. Uh, looking at that lightsaber though, unlike the Bespin release and what we had for the vintage figures, instead of the yellow, we're getting a very beautiful blue color, light blue. I gotta say, I feel like this would match up well against the movie. And I like that this color was given to us. The sculpting to it looks identical to what we received with the Retro Collection Bespin Luke. Still giving you the three raised dots on the inside of that little oval indent. And then he has no problem holding it in his right hand where it slides right into position. And then for the Harpoon Blaster, you know, where he scales up the belly of the ad at I like that this was included. I think it's a good choice. Back end of my weapon is a little bit warped down from being in the packaging. Otherwise, what little detailing we're getting, I feel like, is in line with the vintage figures. All black color, and certainly no weathering to go along with it. And the figure has no problem holding on to this in his left hand. So overall, for me, boy, I do want to like this figure more than I do. I certainly am keeping in mind that, basically, this is a what-if figure. What if this figure was made back in the 80s? But even with that mind overall, I still feel like they missed the mark with the way the figure was sculpted. Like I said, giving it more soft edges for those pieces sticking out on the side of the helmet. Certainly would have liked to have seen a harder separation of his face against the inside of the helmet. And like I said, the chest piece just doesn't seem to stick out like it did on the original. So it kind of feels like the figure was inspired by the vintage line, but almost done, like I said earlier, as one that was done for just a few years ago. The Rebels line, the Mission Series line and such. But I am glad they took the effort to make the release to give us a figure that wasn't done. And I look forward to seeing what they do, fingers crossed, for the Return of the Jedi Retro Collection. So that wraps this one up. Definitely let me know what you think of this figure in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.